They are the smooth, smart, and savvy characters we love to hate. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 magnificent bastards in film. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? For this list, we're focusing on movie characters, either heroes or villains, who are geniuses, strategically gifted, goal-oriented, charming, and almost always one step ahead of the competition. Please tell me you're going to appeal to my humanity. When combined, these devious qualities result in the most unforgettable magnificent bastards of cinema, who never fail to steal the show. Yes, but that doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Just so you know, a spoiler alert is probably in order. Ooh, that's a bingo! <laughs> Number 10. Royal Tenenbaum, The Royal Tenenbaums. What have you got? I got a pretty bad case of cancer. It's one thing to be an oblivious bastard, and quite another to be a master manipulator who plays mind games with your children, even if one of them isn't yours by blood. Oh, I'm kidding. Call me Pappy. Okay. Come on, let's shag ass. Look into Royal Tenenbaum's eyes and ask yourself what you see. Who stabbed you? He did. Well, there was a price on my head and he was a hired assassin. Well, he'll tell you what you see, and you know what? You will believe it, and he'll probably shame you in the process. He does horrible things like shoot his son with a BB gun on purpose, withhold a divorce from his estranged wife, and fake cancer to make his family love him. Everyone's against me. That's your fault, man. Yeah, I know, but damn it, I want this family to love me. The funny thing is, it all ultimately works, and his family genuinely seems to care for him by the end. Magnificent. No one spoke at the funeral, and Father Peterson's leg had not yet mended. But it was agreed among them that Royal would have found the event to be most satisfactory. Number 9. Hans Gruber, Die Hard. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. He very nearly dupes the FBI into helping him rob a building of piles of money. And when Alexander saw the breadth of his domain, he wept, for there were no more worlds to conquer. If that doesn't qualify you as a magnificent bastard, we don't know what does. Because I am interested in the $640 million in negotiable bearer bonds that you have locked in your vault. As John McClane's original nemesis, Hans Gruber exudes a highbrow demeanor that allows him to infiltrate social circles, and his practical attitude often leads to calculated violence. Ho, ho, ho. If you don't respect his business demands or intelligence, he'll forget about being a classy gentleman and calmly exterminate you. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. Hans Gruber's smarter than most, flashing a smug grin as a reminder. Of course, that doesn't mean he's incapable of making mistakes. Happy trails, Hans. Number 8. Danny Ocean, The Ocean's Trilogy. Please state your name for the record. Daniel Ocean. Has Hollywood ever seen a more magnificent bastard than Frank Sinatra? And who better to take up that mantle than George Clooney? What? You want to knock over a casino? In both cases well-groomed, remarkably dressed, and handsome as heck, Danny Ocean organizes the ultimate heist. Because a house always wins. Sure, there are easier ways to impress an ex-wife, but a true magnificent bastard goes all out. 150 million without breaking a sweat. We're talking Vegas, baby. A con man's dreamland where all it takes is a little charm and intellect to accomplish your goals, along with a team of misfit criminals. I knew what I was doing. Only a special man can lead such a crew, and the exceptionally egotistical Danny has just the right amount of crazy to take on the job. Play long enough, you never change the stakes, the house takes you. Unless, when that perfect hand comes along, you bet big, and then you take the house. Number 7. Amy Elliott Dunn, Gone Girl. I am frightened of my own husband. Ah, love and marriage. Till death do us part. I did not kill my wife. I am not a murderer. 
While Amy Elliott Dunn from Gone Girl has a certain amount of fame, she undoubtedly has beauty and brains as well, along with a look that says, don't you ever mess with me. And my lazy, lying, cheating, oblivious husband will go to prison for my murder. Even so, her philandering husband can't seem to keep his Benny in his pants and opens up a Pandora's box full of surprises. thought there might be another side to this story. When her marriage vows are broken, this woman offers up a nasty blend of conditional love and revenge. Men always use that, don't they, as their defining compliment. She's a cool girl. She's the modern prototype for magnificent female bastards. My wife, Amy Elliott Dunn, disappeared three days ago. Number six, Dr. Hannibal Lecter, The Silence of the Lambs. Good morning. This locked up loony will not only charm your socks off, he might also charm your face off. And by charm, we mean he will eat you. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. When the FBI struggles to hunt down the serial killer Buffalo Bill, a young agent finds herself face to face with a psychiatrist slash serial killer for help. If I help you, Clarice, it will be turns with us too. Quid pro quo, I tell you things, you tell me things. And like the true bastard that he is, Lecter magnificently steals each and every scene with manipulation and tension. Hi, Clarice. Did the rancher make you perform fellatio? Did he sodomize you? He's undoubtedly one of the greatest movie villains of all time, and certainly one of the most disturbing. <laughs> He'll keep you hanging on every word before thoroughly destroying your day. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Number five, Raul Silva, Skyfall. Hmm, you think you did. That's her genius. He's a frisky Bond villain that was deeply affected by personal betrayals after being served up to the Chinese by his own boss. I understood why I had survived. I needed to look in your eyes one last time. Unfortunately for Raul Silva, his emotional scars lead to another traumatic experience that produces physical scars. See what she's done to you. Well, she never tied me to a chair. Her loss. This scheming cyber terrorist dresses to impress and takes his time carrying out deadly revenge plans. He's going for him. Tell Tana, get her out of there. James Bond isn't necessarily moved by Silva's poetic musings, but he damn sure respects his magnificent bastardom. This guy will undress you with his eyes and then creep on your computer system. Oof. Why? Because he can. You see what comes of all this running around, Mr. Bond? All this jumping and fighting. It's exhausting. Number four, Loki, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I am Loki of Asgard, and I am burdened with glorious purpose. Standing out isn't easy when your bro's the crown prince of Asgard. I was a king, the rightful king of Asgard. However, this adoptive brother overcomes his deep sadness with hilarious one-liners that not only humiliate his victims, but even make them laugh on occasion. Are you ever not going to fall for that? Loki's verbal warfare compensates for his skinny frame, and his passive-aggressive behavior always keeps opponents on their toes. I said... No! He demands attention whenever he walks into a room, mainly because nobody's ever sure if it's a good Loki day or a bad Loki day. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by... He's the sad clown of superheroes and the mad genius of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Once you accept that in your heart, you will know peace. Number three, Kaiser Soze, The Usual Suspects. He becomes a myth, a spook story that criminals tell their kids at night, rat on your pop and Kaiser Soze will get you. This character is partly truth, partly fiction a walking contradiction. I mean, why me? I'm stupid. I'm a cripple. Why me? Because you're a cripple, Verbal. Because you're stupid. Because you're weaker than them. <laughs> when police question Roger Verbal Kint during a murder investigation, a shadowy figure emerges through a series of disturbing vignettes. 
looking for his business. They find his wife and kids in the house and decide to wait for Soze. While the mythical madman appears only through the words of Verbal, the killer's violent history is revealed as the investigator puts together the pieces. How do you shoot the devil in the back? This altar is protected from up on high by the prince. And tell me who he is. What about a pretzel, man? What's your story? There was a lawyer. What lawyer, Verbal? The unassuming Mr. Kint says it best. And just like that, he was gone. This magnificent bastard must be seen to be believed. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. And like that, he's gone. Number two, The Joker, The Dark Knight. <sighs> Hi. Brilliantly portrayed by Heath Ledger, this already iconic Batman villain reached a whole new level of magnificent bastard in The Dark Knight. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you Stranger. With a twisted personal background and an affinity for psychological warfare, the Joker's warped sense of humor is written across his face. So, me watching, he takes the knife to her, laughing while he does it. He turns to me and he says, Why so serious? His dialogue conveys a man possessed, yet his performance style of speech keeps people listening despite the fact that a typical conversation usually ends in bad news. Don't worry, I'm gonna tell you where they are. Both of them. And that's the point. You'll have to choose. In mind, body, and soul, the Joker will forever remain the prototype for future magnificent bastards. Then why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, no. No. No, you. You complete me. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hooray, Doctor! Hooray! And a wise decision that is. What happens to Ben? The assassin always dies, baby. It's necessary for the national healing. Drink your milkshake. I drink it up. Number one, Colonel Hans Landa in Glorious Bastards. Ooh, that's a bingo. <laughs> in one of Quentin Tarantino's most bastard-filled films, this fictional SS officer manipulates each and every scene to his advantage through a masterful command of several languages. Signore in piacere. Even though Hans Landa is a complete megalomaniac, he understands that a composed manner of speech will strike fear into the hearts of his enemies, or simply confuse them into revealing the truth. The Führer couldn't have said it better himself. He giggles like an adolescent and enjoys the art of deceptive conversation, which makes him a rare type of human scum and undoubtedly the preeminent magnificent bastard of our time. Je congé de vous, je vous dis adieu. Do you agree with our list? Why should I? Who's your favorite Magnificent Bastard in film? For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Been practicing this speech a little bit, did I rush? It felt like I rushed. That was good, I liked it.